big thanks to Bernhard for sponsoring this episode. You know, I love trying new things and I came up with this idea. It could be brilliant, but it could be horrible as well. So you, me, we together are going to find out. For this idea, you're gonna need one of these pans. Basically, this is a baking tray. It's a steel baking tray and I cleaned it up, put a little bit of olive oil in it so it's kind of non-stick. I'm gonna put all these skirt steaks in that little pan. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Hey, that will never fit. Watch me. First, we're gonna make a barbecue rub, which consists of one part salt, half a part of paprika powder, half a part of onion powder, a quarter part of garlic powder, quarter part of ground black pepper, half a part of dried parsley, a quarter part of rosemary powder, and a quarter part of thyme powder. And for me, I selected beautiful skirt steaks, inside skirt steak with a lot of intramuscular fat, a little bit of fat on the outside, and we're not gonna trim that off. We wanna keep it as it is, because that fat is gonna be the secret of this dish to make it juicy and tender. I'm gonna sprinkle all of them with our barbecue rub. Now, this doesn't have to be much, because the skirt steak's really thin. So if we overdo it, the barbecue rub is gonna overpower the beef flavor. And I definitely want the beef flavor to win here. The rub that I made is a classic barbecue rub with a hint of Italian spices. The garlic, the parsley, a little bit of rosemary, and of course some thyme. It's gonna give it a classic Mediterranean style of flavor. They're all seasoned up and ready. Now what I wanna do is I wanna roll them up. Make them into like a, well, basically a rolled skirt steak. But the plan is like if I roll them up, and make the bottom the same height. I'm gonna get these beautiful rolls like this, and then I can set them on the tray with a little bit of butcher's wine, and we can have all these rolls like a cinnamon roll bread. How cool would that be? Now I'm gonna tie this up with my butcher's wine, but I wanna make sure that it's secure and it doesn't fall apart. This is very easy. You can use any nut you like. You don't have to be a butcher or use the butcher's nut. We're gonna make this as simple as possible. So everyone can do this. I bet you this is gonna be some kind of summer hit. This is so cool already. Like, I haven't seen this ever, so I couldn't find it online, but if I'm not the first one, just let me know. Let's cut this up. Right in between the two pieces of butcher's rope. There we go. And there we have it. The perfect roll, seasoned on the outside with our barbecue rub, and now it can go onto our tray. You see where I'm going with this? It looks like a party on a plate. This is going to surprise your friends and family. When you put this on the barbecue, they're going to think like, whoa, what's this guy doing? And then when the products finish, they're going to understand you're the barbecue king. Look at that. I'm going to do a couple more of these to make sure that we got the plate completely filled up. Oh, oh it's good, a right? meat pie. It smells good. It's the best steak that we love. We love the inside skirt steak. And you're gonna turn it in something else. And we're That's going it. to make it, like the idea is, how can you make something out of something that you don't expect? Because if like this looks like insane. I'm, I'm getting hungry just looking at it. So what's your plan? Smoke it. What I'm thinking is like all these little steak, they're gonna like shrink up yeah. and get more tight. Yeah. And then they're gonna stand out and like the hot smoke is gonna go over it. Yeah. And then you get these like little ridges. Yeah. And all of that juice is gonna run in there and the cracks and the nooks and like the whole tray is gonna get all of that dripping, all of the juice. Do you hear that? Oh, that Do you hear good. that? It sounds good, right? Get behind the camera, let's fire up the grill. Yeah. Let's go. I'm running my Bernard smoker on hardwood pellets. That's gonna be a perfect flavor profile to go with these inside skirt steaks because they're gonna have a heavy beef flavor. We're running it at a temperature of 135 to 140 degrees Celsius. And of course, I wanna stick in a thermometer to make sure that we get it absolutely right because we need it to go almost all the way to pulled beef. Of course, I'm gonna use my trusty meter thermometer to make sure I get the temperatures right. 
stick it in in the middle. And now we're just going to let this run until we hit a core temperature of 97 degrees Celsius. Check this out. That looks insane. Wow. How juicy is this? How good looking is this? It's been smoking for five hours in this tray. And we got all of these juices in the bottom. Still super hot, of course. But look at that. All that fat rendered down and was sitting in the bottom. And it's bubbling up while cooking. So basically the bottom has been cooking in all of the juices, making sure that it stays juicy and the top got smoked and built this beautiful crust and nice red color. Insane, good looking, but we gotta let it rest. We gotta hold on. Marcia, I know you're disappointed, man, but we gotta do it. Big surprise, we got a guest, Miko from, from the Czech Republic. For all the Dutch people, I, I sincerely apologize after us losing in the, <laughs> in the European Championship to invite a Czech guy. But in all fairness, he's a great guy. And more importantly, he won the giveaway. Yeah. Yes, I know, girl. <laughs> I know. He won the giveaway on the walk. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's a Czech. I know he's Czech. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. I'm sorry about football. <laughs> But the cool thing is like he won and we, he, you won a free grill yeah. and you're here to pick it up. So he drove all the way here, which is like eight hours drive or something like that. Yes, 900 kilometers. 900 kilometers. That's like nine hours driving or something yes. like that. So uh, I put him up in a nice hotel. We took good care of him. And now he made us hash browns. Well, not really hash browns because yeah. this is the Czech version of it. Yeah, it's called Bramborak. Bramborak. Yeah. This is the way his grandmother used to make it, and now he's making it for us as a side dish to this beautiful meat pie that we got in here resting. Would you do the honors of opening this up? Yeah, of course. Ooh. Ooh. Will, will we show it? We should. I think we should. They would get even more angry with you if we, should, <laughs> if we didn't. Look at that. Oh, you crazy. see it's still warm, eh? We, we left it out yeah. to rest for half an hour or so. It's almost like art. You know. Yeah, almost. It looks it's almost too good to eat. Hypnotizing. I still like to show it to you guys. Look at this. Look at how cool that looks. You, you want to give it a try? Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, I want to eat too. Just grab one. Just okay. go ahead. Just pick one that you think is going to be best. We got beautiful smoke ring, by the way. I don't know how yours looks, but we got nice red from the smoke color. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. It's very juicy. It has beautiful mild smoke flavor, but still it's like, it's almost, I don't know, it's like barbecue and not barbecue at the same time. It's like my grandma put like meat in the oven. Yeah. And it's mixed with what I do on barbecue because she can't do that. That's it. Yeah. And then this beef is so flavorful. It has like, the inside skirt has so much flavor. It's really beefy. That's, I think that's it. It's really, mm -hmm. really strong in beef flavor. Like your grandma will make stew, beef stew, yeah. and then you have that strong beef flavor and it's transplanted in this, in this beautiful pie. Look, you got all that beautiful fat in there. Mmm, this is good stuff. And now we gotta try the hash browns. Like, how do you call them in Czech? Bramborak. It's like we call potatoes brambory. Yeah. It's the name from like, the yep. name of the vegetable. So brambori, bramborak. bramborak. So how do, if people want to make this at home, how do you make it? Yeah. It's very easy. You just grate potatoes and mix it with other ingredients, which is salt, pepper, a uh, few eggs, a little flour to like make mixture. And the most important part is uh, a lot of garlic and a lot of majoranka. You can say it in... Margarine. Yeah. So, and that's it. You mix it together and then you can uh, use oven like we do, or you can put it on the pan with uh, lard or oil, whatever you like the most, and fry it until you have like decent color. Nice. Of course, we were used in near pizza oven, but I really like the way you use the technique, like um, switching with the heat, put it in, take it out, make sure that you have a moderate heat, but you also like, you got the beautiful crispy outside and 
It's it looks like it looks like golden brown. It has all that good stuff. I I stopped talking about it. I just want to eat it. <laughs> uh, honestly, this is better than our our pannenkoek, uh, aardappel pannenkoek. I wish I could knew. Let me let me show you Marson's face because he's genuinely upset. Sorry, Marson. Sorry, bro. Do you think the dog will like Bram Borak? Mm. We can try it. We just mm. give it a piece. Start with. Do you like Bram Borak? But it's not meat. It's no. not. It's not meat. <laughs> Maybe with the juices. Oh yeah. <laughs> what dip are you? It. Yeah. She wants to dip it as well. Okay. We'll we'll do, make her decide. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. You can't win at everything, you know. I really enjoyed it. It's a good recipe. So glad you guys watched. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And make sure to follow uh, Mikai on his uh, his Instagram. Yes. That's right. MJ's Kitchen. And the link's down below, right, Marson? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Marson says to like and subscribe. So thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you guys next time. <laughs> Big thank you to our patrons and the YouTube members. Until then. It's Mark Lick. And keep on grilling. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good. Hmm.